It's James here from goodguitarist.com and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to play If I Fell by the Beatles and I'm going to teach you how to play it authentically using bar chords but I'm also going to show you some easier ways so that we can just avoid playing bar chords entirely and you could play through this song in a much simpler way. If you find you need some help with the mechanics of guitar I have a completely free ebook that teaches you everything you need to know about the chord shapes, strumming, and putting it all together. I also have a complete beginner's course which takes that a step further, taking you from an absolute beginner to a confident strummer. So please check all that stuff out if you'd like some additional help. Either way, we're going to get started with the intro, and I want to do it the simple way first. Our first shape is that. It's just two notes. I have my first finger on the sixth fret of the A string, and my ring finger on the eighth fret of the next string. And that's the power chord shape. You might be familiar with that if you've learned any rock and roll tunes. Anyways, the real trick here is that the tip of my index is resting underneath the thickest string, which mutes it, but it's still pressing down on the A string. So you might have to pay attention to where your thumb is, adjust your elbow, you know, make that feel pretty good. That's our first shape, and we just strike it once, just aiming for the thicker strings. We don't want to strum all of them, or else we get some, some weird noises. We just want to go for the thicker strings, nice and gently. If I fell in love with you. And then we go down to the fifth fret with the same shape. Promise to be true. And we go down one more fret to the fourth fret. We're following our first finger. Help me. And then we go down to the first fret, all with the same shape. Understand. So let's just try that, paying attention to where our first finger is. We're at the sixth fret. One, two, three, four. Fifth fret, two, three, four. Fourth fret, two, three, four. First fret, two, three. Cause I've, back to where we started, been in love before. And I found that love was more. Fifth fret. So that's the simple way to do it using the power chord shape. Now, building off of that, we can take that exact same shape that we started on, the E flat power chord, and we can add a couple more fingers. I'm going to add my pinky just underneath my ring finger. So it's also on the eighth fret. Then I'm going to add my middle finger to the seventh fret of the B string. So this shape right here is actually identical to A minor. We just go up one, two, three, four, five, six times. Then we have our first finger on the A string. And we're gonna, we're not gonna flatten our first finger, but we are gonna bring it in so that this part touches the highest string. So we're not flattening it against all of them. That's a big misconception with bar chords. People think that you flatten your finger and that uses up so much excess energy. We only need our finger to hit the A string and the high E string. So we can curl it like a little bridge. It's like a bridge going from the A string to the E string. And then we plug the holes with our A minor shape. And that is our E flat minor bar chord. And if you're interested in bar chords, I have a course, Bar Chords Made Easy, which starts with the power chord shape and gradually builds into the bar chord over the course of the entire course. So if you're interested in getting to that point where you can play any chord, major or minor, all the way up and down the fretboard, I do recommend taking a look at that. I'll put a link for that down below. Either way, we have our E flat minor chord. And then thinking about our power chord shape here, we're gonna move that down to the fifth fret and I'm going to now flatten my ring finger. So my ring finger is flat and it's playing the D, G, and B strings. And this is probably the hardest bar chord shape in existence. So don't worry about it. You could always just do the simple version of it. But if you're curious and interested, that's the bar chord. Then we go down one fret, same shape. Help me. And then we play this shape right here. So for that one, my first finger is barring the sixth fret, and then these two fingers are, this is like the power chord shape, and my pinky is right underneath it, so. 
That's a B flat minor chord. Based off of E minor, brought up six times, and then we flatten our finger. And this one's pretty tricky too. So that's why I gave you the option of the simpler version. Anyways, those are the bar chords for the intro. Let's play through them. If I fell in love with you, would you promise to be true and help me understand? Cause I've been in love before and I found that love was more. And from here, whether you're playing the power chord version or the bar chord version, here's where it comes together and it's all the same for the rest of this tune. We go E minor and A. And those are just basic open shapes. For each one of them, the strumming pattern is really simple. It's just four down ups. So we just go one and two and three and four and then we go to A, one and two. So now we're going to play through the entire intro. I'm going to use the bar chords, but you're welcome to use the simplified ones where you're just playing the power chord element of it. We're going to do it nice and slow. One, two, three. If I fell in love with you, would you promise to be true and help me understand? Cause I've been in love And now for the rest of the tune, it's a lot simpler than that. It's going to be mostly open chords. We have a D chord, E minor, A, as we've already touched upon. And then there's an F sharp minor, which we could do as a bar chord. Same thing as B flat minor, but here we're at the second fret. And that's the power of bar chords is it's just four shapes and you can play pretty much anything. Anyways, we have F sharp minor. But we could also do that in an easier way where we play an A chord with these three fingers. So second fret of the D string, G string, and B string. And then our first finger on the th second fret of the thickest string. That's a simplified F sharp minor chord. And there's also G minor, which we could use that same shape at the third fret. Or we could play it like this. And for that, I have my middle finger on the third fret of the thickest string. This next string is muted by the underside of my finger. Then my ring finger and pinky are on the third fret of the G and B string. And the underside of my pinky is muting the highest string. So three, mute, open, three, three, mute. Now we're gonna strum through the verse using downstrokes only so we can focus on the switching and counting out each chord for the right number of times. Starting on D, I'll use the easy version of all the chords. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So those are the chords for the first verse, and before we move on and learn the rest of the tune, let's add some strumming to that. The strumming pattern goes like this. I'll do it a little bit slower. Three and four and. And that's the most common strumming pattern ever. I've gone over it in several lessons. I'll put a link to the latest one in the corner where we break it down in a bunch of different ways. But really, really quick, the first half is down, down, up, three, four. Down, down, up, three, four. And the second half, we would practice going one, two, miss, up, down, up. So I'm missing the strings on beat three. One, two, 
miss. Up, down, up. One, two, miss. Up, down, up. So I would make sure to practice it just like we did in those two parts, counting the numbers out loud. And if you need extra help, I have those lessons. I'll put links to that in the corner down below where we break down the strumming pattern much, much further, much more in depth. Anyways, before we add that to the chords, we have a couple spots where things are gonna be different. In the very first measure, we went D, two, three, four. So those two chords were sharing the measure. That means they're gonna be sharing the strumming pattern. And the best way to get through it is just play the first half of the strumming pattern on each shape. So for D, down, down, up, and then on E minor, down, down, up. Let's try that a couple times. Three, four. Down, down, up, down, down, up. One more time. Four. Down, down, up, down, down, up. And that also happens at the end of the first verse, going between G minor and A. So I do the same thing. Three, four, down, down, up, down, down, up. Otherwise, it's gonna be one strumming pattern per chord shape. Let's try it. You can always just watch this, see how it goes, and then try it with me after. Starting off on D. One, two, three, four. Cool, so that's the first verse. Now the second verse starts off the exact same way, it's just the ending that's a little bit different. So we play through. And here, we're gonna play A7. To play that shape, we put our middle finger on the second fret of the D string, our ring finger on the second fret of the B string. So we have from the A string, open, two, open, two, open. And from there, we go into the bridge, which has one new chord shape, D9. And that one's just two fingers. We have our first finger on the first fret of the B string, and then our middle finger on the second fret of the G string. Top four strings, O, two, one, O. Oh. And that's it, that's all the chord shapes in this tune. Let's play through the second verse going into the bridge using down strokes only, just so we can get used to the chord order once again. Starts off just like the verse. One, two, three, four. One, two, two, one, two, three, four. So go through that as many times as you need to, downstrokes only, getting the chords in the right order, working out all the switches, and then we can add our strumming to that. Remember, whenever there's two chords sharing a measure, we do down, down, up for each chord shape. Let's do it. One, two, three, four.
only part left is the ending, and that's pretty straightforward. It goes like this. So just back and forth between D and G minor with our strumming pattern. Now at this point, when it comes to putting the entire song together, we start off with our intro. That goes into the first verse. And then second verse and bridge, we're going to be playing that like one whole unit three times. And then we have our ending. So it's pretty simple as far as the order of the parts. There's no weird twists and turns. You know, if you just go through each part in this lesson, and then you take a look at this on the side here, that's the chord order. You write that down, you listen to the song as you read that, so that you can get a feeling for like, okay, the second verse is gonna come. Oh yeah, that has that part. You know, like that's the best way to learn how to get through the tune. Don't forget, there's my free ebook, which goes over all the fundamentals of acoustic guitar. There's my complete beginner's course, which goes over all of that, but in a incredibly step-by-step -step at your own pace way, taking you from absolute beginner to confident strummer. If you're interested, if you're a bit more on the intermediate and advanced side and you're interested in getting into bar chords, I have bar chords made easy. So no matter what, how it is that you'd like to play this song, we have you covered. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel. Leave a comment down below if you have any specific questions. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.